This video is going to go over how to use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. So what we need to do to solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula is we need to manipulate the equation so that one side is equal to zero. Another way of saying this is that we need to convert the quadratic into what's called standard form. When we have something written in standard form, it's going to look like this. So in this case, x is my variable or my input, and what I have is three different numbers. We have a, b, and c, and these are going to be really important when it comes to the quadratic formula. First, well, then what we want to do is once we got it into standard forms, we want to identify what are the a, b, and c values, just like I did over here. What we're going to do is input the values into the formula, and then we're going to solve for x. So it's as easy as that. So when given an equation in standard form, what we're going to do is input it into this formula. I won't go over how you get to here. Um, I could do another video on it, but overall what we just need to know right now is that that is the quadratic formula and we're going to plug the numbers in. So first let's look at the first one. Uh, solve 3x squared minus 5x equals 8 using the quadratic formula. So what we need to do is first step is we need to get this to be equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides so that I can get that into standard form. So we'll have 3x squared minus 5x minus 8 and that will equal zero. What we want to do then is identify the a, b, and c value. So a is equal to three, b is equal to negative five, and c is equal to negative eight. What we want to do now is plug that into the quadratic formula. So we'll have x equals negative b. So we're going to take the negative of the b value. So we'll have negative of negative five plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. So the b value again was negative 5. So we'll have negative 5 squared minus 4 times the a value, which is 3, times the c value, which is negative 8. That whole thing needs to be square rooted. And then we're going to divide by 2 times the a value, which is 3. What we want to do is you could go ahead and plug this straight into your calculator. I want to clean it up just a little bit because, um, yeah, I just think it would look a little bit better. So the negative of negative 5 is positive 5. And then plus or minus, uh, then we want to clean up that square root. So we have negative 5 being squared, which is 25. And then we have negative 4 times 3 times negative 8. And so what we're going to get there is positive 96. And then 2 times 3 is 6. All right, let's make this just a little bit nicer, even one step further. Uh, we still have the 5, so we'll have 5 plus or minus 25 plus 96 is 121. And the square root of 121 is 11. And so here's where I'm going to get two different answers. This plus or minus means that we have to look at two different cases. The first case is going to be when we're adding. So we'll have x equals 5 plus 11 divided by 6, which gives me 16 over 6. I could reduce that to 8 thirds. We could also bring that down to a decimal, but I'm going to leave it as a fraction for right now. So there's my first solution. My second solution is going to be when I subtract. So x equals 5 minus 11 divided by 6. 5 minus 11 is a negative 6. So we'll have negative 6 divided by 6, which is negative 1. And there's going to be my second solution. So how this relates to other ways of solving quadratic equations is that if you were to graph this into, your, into a graphing calculator or something like that, what you would notice is that because it equals 0, that you would have x-intercepts at 8 over 3 and negative 1. Let's try one more example. So the one thing with quadratic formula, when I'm looking at this, is that I can't immediately use it. I always have to manipulate this into standard form and then I can use the quadratic formula. So what I often see is that a lot of students make mistakes, not really with the quadratic formula itself, but it's with getting things into standard form. And if you have the wrong standard form, you're going to get the wrong answers. So what we wanna start with is we're trying to get one side to be equal to zero. I'm gonna start by trying to expand. So we have 10 equals 2, and then we have x minus 1 multiplied by itself. What I'm going to do is expand the x minus 1. So we'll have 10 equals 2, 
And we'll have x times x, giving me x squared. x times negative 1, giving me negative x. Negative 1 times x, giving me negative x. And negative 1 times negative 1, giving me positive 1. Next, let's uh, we can clean that up a little bit. The negative x minus x is negative 2x. And I can also expand the 2 through the brackets. So we'll have 10 equals 2 times x squared is 2x squared. When I combine these two, I got negative 2x. Multiplying that by 2, I get negative 4x. And then 2 times 1 is 2. Last thing, let's get this other side to equal 0. So let's subtract 10 from both sides. And what we'll get here is 0 equals 2x squared minus 4x minus 8. And now we're ready to use the quadratic formula. So again, my a value is right here at 2. My b value is negative 4. And my c value is negative 8. So let's go ahead and plug that into the formula. So x equals negative b. So we'll have negative of negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. We're really going to divide this whole thing by 2 times a. All right, let's make this look a little bit nicer. So the negative of negative 4 is positive 4 plus or minus the square root of 16. And then we have negative 4 times negative 8 times positive 2. So all this is right here is really just kind of a string of multiplication. You could also see it as like you are subtracting, um, but I like to just kind of multiply all those numbers together. So I get negative 4 times 2 times negative 8, and I get positive 64. And then this whole thing is being divided by 4. So cleaning this up a little bit more, we've got x equals 4 plus or minus 16 plus 64 is going to be 80. We can't square root 80 nicely, um, so I'm just going to leave it as a square root, and then we'll divide by 4. So my first solution is going to come from what I'm adding. So we'll have x equals 4 plus the square root of 80 divided by 4. And then let's plug that into a calculator. What I get for my answer is 3.2360. My sex, uh, my second solution will come from x equals 4 minus the square root of 80 divided by 4. When I plug that into a calculator, what I get is negative 1.2360. And there's my two solutions. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you need any help.